your glory let the anointing saturate this place let it come upon every heart changing hearts touch people by the power of your spirit touch them by your glory touch them by your fire let every heart be taken captive let the sensitivity of the Holy Ghost enter this place let the presence of angels enter this place. Let the sensitivity of your spirit. Holy Spirit, say with me, say Holy Spirit. Fill this place. I want more of you. I'm hungry for you. Hungry for your presence. Fill me with a fullness overflowing. Fill me with the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give me a praise offering, church. What is your name? Come on, keep praise and praise him. Amen, amen. Have your seats, have your seats, church. Just stay in the spirit of worship for me. Um, Richard, just come for me. Yeah, just come and stand here. There's someone else also there. Um, I hope you're not tired after this. People, I get tired after the lockdown. I was like two day services or a conference we had. Um, we've kind of like taken it slow still, so it is okay. Are you guys with me? Just relax. Say with you, relax. The presence of God, the Holy Spirit works in an atmosphere and environment that is relaxed, not tense. Always works in a rest, in a realm of rest. I want, us, I want us to be sensitive to the movement that if he decides to move in whichever way, are you guys with me? It is our hearts. Remember I said this morning, it is faith that pulls him in. I'm going to minister to you now. Is your first time here? Yes, the care. One of those Afrikaans, almost Afrikaans, but like I refuse to speak English, you know. <laughs> it's my first time. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm also Afrikaans. I'm joking. Okay. <clears throat> What does your wife do? I know she. I know she sings, but what does she do as like a work-wise, or, or does she we work, work with together. you guys? We work together. Okay. Now I saw this morning while I was preaching, I heard the Lord saying to me, and I walked past you, and I had a split image of a vision, and the Lord showed me a promotion that is coming. So I was just asking, like, is he doing a work or something like that? But I looked at the couple and I saw a promotion that is coming. And the Lord said to me, something that has always been wanted, it's always been desired, but it has been put aside, is going to uh, take place because I have matured and I've changed and I've shifted things. But in the realm of the Spirit, a promotion is coming where the Lord is saying, you shall see 
what your eyes have not seen yet, but your heart has dreamed of. For what eye has not seen, nor has entered into the heart of man, nor has the ears have heard, I will give it to you, says the Lord. Because I looked and I saw visions and dreams from very young ago. And the Lord is saying, you shall have seen the working of my hand upon your life. Even in times of discipline, you have seen the working of my hand. But now there shall be a time of lifting because, son, there is something that I'm doing for something that I'm shifting, says the Lord. And I will lift you to a place that is higher. But I've called you, says the Lord, to lead and to lead many. As you shake off any form of religion, any form of disappointment, you will see how it will cause you to lift, to begin to run swiftly. Like a gazelle leaping over the mountains. And I shall cause you to run with the strength of horses. And I shall have you, give you the ability to ride on chariots because the prophetic anointing and the evangelistic anointing that is in you. Because even as I'm standing, I'm seeing that it is like an eye of a prophet that is in you. For the Lord is saying there's a time that is shifting where the eyes will be opened. And any things that you have seen that you have not understood, many things that you have seen that you have not fully comprehended, for the Lord is saying, even this night you will see how eyes will be opened, even as Elijah prayed for Elisha to say, Lord, open his eyes. You will begin to see and even angelic visitations you had yourself. I look and I see how death was averted by virtue of angelic interference and angelic protection the Lord is saying I have preserved your life to this day but the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you to lift you higher because where you are has been a testing phase but there's much much more to you than what meets the eye says the Spirit for you shall see a way in the wilderness and you shall see a way in the desert place and you will know which road to take says the Lord for I shall lift you and even as you are a pillar in this house you will see how you will meet and lead many and you will cause many and the power of God will come out of your mouth. And the Lord is saying where well, I've given you the gift of deliverance and prophetic and evangelism. You shall see my fire in your hand, son. Because before the end of this year, you shall see how my hand will lift you to a higher place. But as you have prepared your heart and prepared your spirit, be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. For as you have been faithful, as you have been loyal, you will see how I will cause many to be inspired by the anointing that is upon your life. For even this day, a portion of anointing is given to you. An increase of an anointing is given to you. For where you've thought that there was a mistake in the past, the Lord is saying it was not a mistake. It was divine leading and guidance of my spirit to get you to a place where you can receive the call of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I looked and I saw a mantle falling upon you. And the Lord said to me, this man it will walk in the prophetic and the evangelistic. For I will cause his hands to be doing deliverance. But he will have a mantle and anointing that is, that is proportionate to him and even to a level of faith. For this night, faith will arise and the anointing will arise in your life. In Jesus' name. Fill his life. Fill his life. Give me your hand, Herman. Herman, Herman, Herman. 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 Raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your hands to the Lord. Don't worry. You said you're a third year Bible college in another church. So, the enemy has tried to intervene in your life in many areas and has caused a huge delay in the spirit because where you are now you were supposed to be there 10 years ago and I'm looking and I'm seeing an evangelist that is standing in front of me somebody is supposed to be preaching the gospel but evangelism specifically in the area of evangelism because I also see you working with your hands I saw something like the anointing that God the Lord is going to put upon you I saw things that were taken away things that were robbed things that were taken away because as I'm standing I'm seeing houses in front of me now and I'm standing in front, it is like, I'm standing in front of property. And I'm seeing how the enemy has tried to take things or try to remove things that was not supposed to be. Even your very life was tried to be removed by the spirit of delay that is on your life. That the enemy has tried to put into limit that which God has called. The Lord is saying there's an oil of favor upon you, son. Where I will make a way for you in a wilderness, but more than that, I'll open up doors 
because you have seen up until this point it is like an opportunity would happen and then it would close and then another opportunity would happen and then it would close and you think why am I not moving forwards and I hear the Lord saying to me that I will cause him to move and go beyond what his family and his family before him has gone because there was this generational thing that has caused a limitation but somewhere down the line somebody has prayed for you and a seed has come through the generations where the word of God is locked up inside of you because the Lord is saying I will minister and I'll speak to you for direction as where to go and what to do whether you must go left or whether you must go right whether you must move there or move that way for the Lord is saying I will come and I'll bring it like peace before you because the question in your heart will be answered and the question that there's been for long will be answered I'm looking and I'm seeing almost like Family, I see somebody in the family that has prayed, but I'm also looking family that has been that has been dispersed, that has been attacked by a sword. That has been like when the Bible says that the sword would come into a family, it would like scatter them. And because of that, since a very young age, there has been this force of rejection that has tried to put man's tried to let you always find an approval of man and seeking the attention of man. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to bring in a security and identity for you will know me as a heavenly father. Where you have not known a father figure before. And you will br it'll, bring a it'll bring an acceptance and an adoption in you. For the Lord is saying, son, what I have for you in the realm of the spirit, it is loaded. But the enemy has tried to delay with flesh. For be careful. Of any force of seduction and any distraction because there's a call and there's a distraction and the distraction is there to delay you where there's supposed to be many coming through your hands of salvation the enemy wants to bring in a distraction but this night I pray because as I stood as I walked past you there you would see I walk past you. And then as I turned around, I saw and the Lord showed me and I saw an angel standing and I saw a, another spirit that was standing that was not of God. And the Lord said to me, there's a warfare going on over your life. Sure. And there's a conflicting in your heart, but a warfare and a battle. Because there's a voice on the one, I will bring a redemption of time. Because what you think could not have, could have been success or done for so long, I will bring... I can do it in one year. But the spirit of rejection that has followed from a long time. Once adoption takes place and you will know him as your heavenly father, the bondage will be broken off. Raise your hands to the Lord for me. When I look at you, I see the spirit of an evangelist and the anointing of an evangelist upon your life. I pray for the fire of God. I pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. And that your heart will be softened in areas that you have never experienced before. But where the Holy Ghost can operate through you. Because this mantle that I saw in this evangelist, when the Lord said to me, this man is called, but the enemy has tried to delay him. I break the power of the struggle and the conflict that is going, and the conflict that is going on behind him. I speak as a prophet that from this night that every spirit of delay will be removed from his life. Every power that has worked against him that has shut doors, I command it to be removed from him this night. I pray for an opening. I pray for his spirit to open. I pray that you'll pour in the anointing and the Holy Ghost on a level that he has not experienced. That he will get to know you as a heavenly father. I pray for the anointing that you've put upon my life where we have seen tens, hundreds of thousands of salvations that it will come upon his life. That the nations and cities will be shaken by the power of God. That nations and cities will be shaken. For the Lord is saying, can I not do this? Do not look at the distraction. Look at the call, says the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name.
Raise your hands, Let's sing it. There's a cloud in this place. It's the glory. Oh, it's his glory. There's a cloud. We thank you for the glory. May your power, may your presence rest upon this place. Put your words in my mouth. Speak to many that are here. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give him a praise offering, church. Come on, praise him, praise him. Amen, amen. Have your seats. I hope you're excited at least to be here. Just, uh, just stay in, I want you to stay in the atmosphere of sensitivity. And you know, um, if you haven't experienced this, it's okay. If you have, it is okay. But say with me, the Holy Ghost. And, um, we are, I want to get into the sensitivity and the senses. There are about five, in fact, there's about ten senses. But I'm just going to get into five tonight when it comes to five senses of the Holy Spirit. When I say five senses of the Holy Spirit, I more want to say the inward witness, meaning the expression of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Are you guys with me? He is like, um, he is like the wind. You don't know where the, where the wind is coming from or where it's going. And the Bible says, so are those who are of the Spirit. That at any moment in the service, He can come and speak or come and say something. I can minister, I can call somebody out. But it depends upon the sensitivity of the Spirit. And it depends upon the hunger and the faith in the hearts of the people. Are you guys with me? So I want to explain to you, and I want to teach this a little bit tonight. Give me 20 minutes or 30 minutes to teach this, and then we're going to minister to you. Uh, but, um, and we're going to pray for people for importation for this. One desire I have is for a hunger of the Holy Spirit in you. Once you have that, 
I don't have to worry about whether somebody's going to come to church or not. Or they will be compelled, they will be pulled to get to the church. Religion wants to stifle the voice of the Holy Ghost in your life. Are you guys with me? When you look at us in the prophetic or this or that, it all starts with a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is a real person. Are you guys with me? Say with you the Holy Ghost. Go to, let's go to 1 John 2 verse 7. 1 John 2 verse 7. We want to welcome those that are online. We have a, a lot of people online as well right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have people from the UK, from Texas, Idaho, Italy, Scotland, Philippines, uh, Zambia, Australia. A lot in the United States, um, which is Texas, Idaho, West Virginia, Arizona, North Carolina, uh, Asia, Pakistan, uh, Zimbabwe. A lot of people in South Africa that is watching right now. So we have over a thousand people watching. That is plus our other campus still also running. And uh, we want to welcome you to the service. But do not be an online watcher only. Get to the church. Amen. So uh, we have uh, many times also two different crowds. We have a morning crowd and an evening crowd, kind of like if I can say it like that. But uh, I want to get into the five senses of the Holy Spirit. 1 John chapter number 2 verse 7. Listen to this. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginnings. The old commandments uh, 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 which you have heard. No, no, I'm not looking for this one. Is this 1 John 2 verse 7? Maybe I have the wrong scripture here. Let me, let me just look for it. Sorry, my apologies. I'm like reading here and I'm thinking, this has got nothing to do with what I'm preaching. Uh, I think I might just miss it here with a... Um, na, na, na. But on 1 John 2 verse 27. Say with me, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. Say with me, in me. And you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it is as taught you. Now let me just explain this before people take it out of context. And I'm sure you know about this. This doesn't mean that you can say, I don't need a teacher in my life. It just means that you have an inward witness that can identify with what is being taught. And John was speaking here to an audience and a group of people that didn't have good teaching in that area. Or a type of... uh, Uh, congregation type meetings in the area so when he was speaking to them he was saying listen here you have the Holy Ghost inside of you and he can teach you all things I explained or uh, narrated my and explained my uh, my uh, encounter with the Holy Spirit I don't think this morning I think last week when I was in Kruger's door when I got saved I had the Holy Ghost walking into my room and you know what is amazing is when people begin to copy your testimony I'm telling you you know, you can plagiarize everything, but don't plagiarize my testimony. I heard some preacher, I never preached a plagiarizing my testimony. Um, but it's happened a couple of times. The one time they literally copied, paste my testimony onto, onto, uh, onto their websites. I'm like reading this person's whole website, they ministered. I thought, that's great. Let me read them. I'm like, this testimony sounds oddly familiar. <laughs> And they copied, and it happened twice, it happened two times, but two people copied, pasted, and then I heard somebody else now speaking about the testimony, or whatever. If I say that the Holy Ghost has walked into my room, has walked into my room, and I say that Jesus has called me when he walked in, when I saw him standing on a 40-day waterfall, I saw him standing in front of me. Apart from that, I, let me just explain this. You know, many times you will hear me teach or preach and say, you cannot be a prophet unless you've had a visitation from God. Now, a visitation is different for every person. But it's got some type of similarities. 
One thing is you will walk out there knowing you've encountered God. Okay, now Jesus can come in and walk and call you. It can happen in visions and dreams. There will be a connection with angels. Angels can come and call you. Are you guys with me? Some people preach and say you must see Jesus in order to be a prophet, not scriptural. Um, Isaiah was called by, uh, was taken up into an encounter and he saw angels. We see the Lord speaking to Jeremiah. We see many different types of encounters. And I'm not going to get into the prophetic right now. But the connection between prophets and angels are very strong. Angels and prophets work together. Very strong. Not only the Holy Spirit. Prophets and angels work together. Now the other fivefold giftings, apostles, pastors, teachers, and evangelists will fight this and will fight prophets and say we are in angel worship simply because there's not such a strong connection between the angelic gift uh, the angelic with that gift nothing because of that they're inferior it is just by virtue of function are you guys with me when i've seen my ministry shift or things that has come god has always come with an angel to tell me or send me a message from the throne of god so when i begin to preach or to say that when I was called as a prophet, it was by this encounter. And, and now you hear another preacher saying the exact same thing. But exactly the same that I quoted like a week ago or two weeks ago or two weeks before that or a week before that. They were called as prophet. An angel came in. And, but I mean, it was like word for word. And I'm thinking, but what is not this nonsense going on in the body of Christ? And I know they have uh, gotten it. Uh, from us you see because sometimes there's a con when when the holy ghost has left left the church and there's a counterfeit holy spirit again there's a soulish power that will always result in competition they'll be like oh okay leon says we have to jesus had to walk into our rooms or an angel had to walk into our rooms and call it so i better change my testimony to say that things now Are you guys with me? So, to make it now, you know, because there's some preachers out there, they have to be higher than you. If I say, a wind is coming into our church, then a storm came into their church. I'm serious. They have to be higher. It's a competition spirit. I've never been into those things. We are called according to the grace of God and graces each one according to faith and grace given to them you will operate in your gifting and each one has a time of being revealed one person can be three years from now another one can be ten years from now some might be never revealed Elisha was used and revealed and put into office while over 700 other prophets who has not bowed their knee to Baal has not been put into office but they were just put on the bench just in case Elisha falls so that one can come up which tells you there can be many prophets even here in this building here just in case one of God's prophets do not make it so we cannot come to a place of comparing but we have to be at a place where we are always prepared being useful and ready for the master's use fit for the master's use are you guys with me because there might just come a time or a moment and you don't know Reinhard Bonnke said I'm the fifth I was God's fifth choice that he really chose five others before me that has failed or rejected the call that when it came to him he was the fifth one answering it And it is like this and we can miss the call. And you'll see tonight when we get into the, the senses of the Holy Spirit. It is like this we can miss it. It requires a sensitivity. And then they're following a lot of people's lives as a mess. Because they haven't listened to this that I'm going to speak about tonight. Are you guys with me? So say so with the anointing in you. Teaches you. It is not there to replace a teacher. But it is there so that it can guide you. Here's the one when you're at home. He can open up the scriptures to you. He can teach you. You don't need to put on a sermon all the time just to hear the word. You have the Holy Ghost. Or what do you have? Are you guys with me? It is about cultivating a relationship 
with him as if he, as if he's your best friend standing in your room how do you talk to him do you like close your hands and let me pray and the holy ghost is standing there and he's thinking why are you acting why are you pretending you can stand like a normal person and just talk to him are you guys with me um so let's go to Romans 8 verse or be, let's go to Romans 8 16. So in the Old Testament, many of you we have taught on it, and I'm not going to get into it tonight, but you have the Urim and the Thummim, which was given to the priests to hear the voice of God. So they would have the Urim and the Thummim in them, usually behind the ephod that they would wear as a priestly garment. And then when the Bible uses these words to say they casted lots, it would be using the Urim and Thummim. Or if it says that, um, that the Lord spoke to them and said one, two, three, it would speak to the priest, it would speak to David, it would be through the Urim and the Thummim. We just don't know it because we're reading the scripture and we're just saying the Lord said one, two, three. But it was through a certain method they used. And if I even should tell you how God spoke before the Urim and Thummim, you're not going to serve God anymore. So let me, let me leave that. Okay. Um, but the Urim and the Thummim, it was two stones. And according to, according to experts and, and uh, even archaeologists and, and biblical scholars, is that the two stones, one would light up. So they would cast it. And the one was like a black stone. The other one would light up. And it would give an answer of yes or no. Some of times a light, the one would light up would shine a light onto the breastplate of the ephod or the ephod. Remember what they say like this, which had the stones of uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. And each stone were letters and were numbers and was part of the language. And as it, the light would shine on the ephod, it would literally write out what God is saying. Are you guys with me? So they would say, shall we do this? And then they would cast the stones and a light would shine the ones and it would shine on the, on the effort and, and light would shine on the different stones on the effort and it would give God's divine guidance. And by that way, they knew what God was saying to go ahead. Not saying God always spoke like that, but that was one of the, one of the most common ways that God spoke. Even we see it in the book of uh, Joshua, where Joshua had to go and deal with Achan, who took something, a cursed object from the enemy's camp. And he went down, think of this. Joshua is going. God is saying to him, somebody has taken a cursed object. And Joshua must go find it. Now, from between hundreds of thousands of people, uh, up to over 3 million over the whole 40 years. Joshua had to go from group to group, from house to house, from family to family, to find out who took the accursed object. Now, if God can tell him that person, or, or tell him somebody took it, why can't God tell him who took it? The man has to go and walk physically, go to every household, every group, every tribe, and he had to filter it down. He started with the tribes and then the groups and then the father's house, the families. And once he got closer and closer and he would get to the one group and, and, and then the voice of God would tell him, no, it's not there. Then he'd go to the next one, voice of God would tell him, no. Then he'd get to one and said, it's in here. And then he has to break it up more and go deeper and deeper until he got to the family where it was. Then the voice of the Lord said to him that it was, it's here. And we see how Achan took it. Are you guys with me? And I'm not going to get into the scripture uh, just for the sake of time. That's not part of my sermon. I'm actually explaining the Urim and the Thummim. But what it, it required Joshua to be close up to the subject. Why do we say when we prophesy, like I said, we'll start this year with prophecy again. And I did for a year not. But why do we ask people to bring photos and documents? The moment you touch it, the moment I pray for them, I'm close to the subject. There's a connection where God speaks. It is the way God works. There's nothing we can do about it. We cannot change it. It is just the way that God works. We might say, but this is witchcraft. No, it's got nothing. It's just the way God works. But that was the Urim and the Thummim in the Old Testament. You had to be close to the subject to hear God speak. 
Are you guys with me? In the New Testament, say with me, inner witness. You have the Holy Ghost inside of you. It is the Urim and the Thummim inside of you. That is why you need to be close to a subject sometimes. To hear God's voice regarding the matter. Are you guys with me? And this Urim and Thummim still speaks today. Once you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you. If you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is upon you for power. And then when you're in this secret place and you spend a lot of time with the Lord, He is with you. But when He's in you, He's for you for guidance. Are you guys with me? He's there to tell you yes or no. Go this way or go that way. He's the one that will lead you to go to a church and get uh, get an encounter with God. Or He's the one that will tell you to marry this one or not, even though uh, we don't really, it's it's God's guidance. He will tell you, go to this restaurant, be careful if you drive on this road. But there are warning lights. And a lot of times we have preached, uh, people have preached and made a mistake and they say there's a red light and a green light. And it is not so. When we look at scripture, there's there's two red lights, one orange light and two green lights. And I want to explain to you, these are the voices of the Holy Spirit. That you must, it's, it's not really, let me not use the voice. Let me use the word um, uh, witness and feeling. Say with me a witness. It is a sensation inside of you. But the only way you can feel that sensation is by being sensitive. When I'm in the flesh, I cannot feel it. Are you guys with me? I want you really to listen to this. So that when we pray for you tonight that you have an understanding. Go Romans 8 verse 16. Listen to this. The Spirit Himself, himself, say with me, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. He says, the Holy Ghost in you bears witness with the Spirit in you that you are of the Holy Ghost. With our spirit that we are the children of God. There is The Holy Ghost is in you and bears witness. That is what is salvation about. You can either stand in a service when we do an altar call and the Holy Spirit is not bearing witness that you are a child of God. That is when we say we do not have full assurance that a person has to respond to an altar call. Or the Holy Spirit can, can, can bear full witness and assurance that you are a child of God. How do you know that you are a child of God? The Holy Ghost in you will give you that assurance. Don't fool yourself and think you are when you are not. Are you guys with me? Rather lose your reputation and say, you know what? I want to make sure that I'm a child of God instead of guessing this type of thing. So say with me inner witness. The inner witness is tied up to our conscience. When I, when I speak about this witnesses, this voices or witnesses inside of us, it is relating to our conscience and how the Spirit of God and the voice of God speaks to you, speaks to you through a realm of your conscience. A lot of people, the Bible says their conscience has been seared, like with a hot iron, and they can no longer hear the voice of God in that area. They need to have a fresh encounter with God where repentance can come and the fire of God can touch them. And that area can get renewed so that they can be sensitive in that area again. Let me give you an example. Somebody starts drinking and they feel, okay, but this is okay. I I drink a beer a night. I was a Christian that was on fire. Or let me say I start drinking maybe a beer a week. And it's, you know, it's okay. It's just one beer a week. And you hear a slight voice telling you not to do it. But you disobey and you hear it again and you do it again and you carry on and that voice begins to go more silent and no longer you hear when you're thinking but actually God is okay with this no 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 your conscience has been seared what you need is a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit you don't have to go search the scriptures is this now sin or not no ask the Holy Ghost I can justify anything through the scripture I've seen some people they would convince them, try to convince themselves for 20 years whether it's drinking of God or not. Imagine you just didn't care and you just loved God so much. And you said, I'm going to give this up. And your life would be okay. But why do you want to prove to be so close on the edge of hell? Why not be so proved to be so close to God? 
why do I, if you're married, why do you want to see what everything you can do without your wife or without your family? Something is wrong. Yet we are like that in our relationship with God. But a fresh encounter when the Holy Ghost comes down will make your heart afresh. He will clean your conscience. He will make your conscience fresh and new. You will be, all of a sudden you go out and you feel like, okay, wait, I can't watch this. I can't do this. I, I, and nobody is telling you. It is just the Holy Ghost being the teacher inside of you. It is not legalism or condemnation. It is the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. And once we stay in that realm, He feels more pleased to be around us more and more. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That is the attraction of power. That is how power comes upon our lives. That is how we change cities or nations or people. Is by what? By living a holy life. Not a sinless life, but a life that is an obedience of the Holy Ghost. Are you guys with me? Have a seat, have a seat. What is, what is holiness? It is just being in step and obedience of the Holy Spirit each way. You might feel somebody's asking you for lunch. And something just tells you, don't go with that person. And the moment you obey him, you get closer to God. It doesn't even mean the person is evil. It just means you're following the leadings and the guidings of the Spirit. And then he begins to entrust you. We want to change the nations, but we can't hear him on small matters. Are you guys with me? Go to Mark 7 verse 34. And I'm going to start with this. You can take notes because I want to give you five points. You're going to have to write them down as the names or because you're not going to remember it ever. Mark 7 verse 34. Listen to this. The first light I want to get to is a red light. It is called stenazo. Say with me stenazo. S-T-E-N-A-Z-O. Stenazo. is the Greek word stenazo. In Mark 7 verse 34, listen to this. Then looking up to heaven, Jesus sighed. He went like this. <sighs> but not really. I'll explain to you now what it actually means in the Greek. And said to him, Epaphata. That is to be opened. Meaning he looked to the heavens. And something in him, the word there, sighed, actually means to groan. Say with me, to groan. It is stenazo in the Greek word, in the Greek language, which means to have an intense groaning inside of you. People, you think they're desperate. They come here, they cry, they want to have an encounter with God, but at home, they beat their wife, they swear at their wife, or this or that, they go out with their friends, and they never seek God in a realm of groaning. What is groaning? We are so desperate for change. God is attracted towards somebody that is desperate, that is hungry, that it doesn't matter. Listen, when I was young, like I said, the way when we get older, we kind of like, uh, we tr that is why it is good to get saved while you're young. Okay, it's not bad to get saved while you're old. It is just that there is a lot of responsibilities. But when you don't have that much, if you're not married or you don't have children, you can seek the face of God. And it can set the course of your life going forward. Thousands of hours I sought His face. What you see as a result of ministry right now or what we are doing or thing, that is our, th oh my gosh. And I would literally just sit and lie in my room on my floor and wait for Him to come in. I would pray or I would cry, I would weep. I would praise alone in my room, praying tongues for hours a day, every single day, until I could taste that the power of God has come upon me. Because I knew there was things in my life that I could not get rid of unless I received the power of God. There were sins in my life that couldn't get broken unless the power of God intervened. There was promotion I needed or favor I needed or graces I needed in ministry unless the power of God intervened. There's importation you can get through association. But then there's importation you can't, you can't get without having that personal time with God. When God can look and He can find a man or a woman that fasts and days, long days, 
prays, hours, try to put off any desire of the flesh. If they love to watch, if you love to watch Netflix, every day, four hours, lying on your couch watching Netflix, uh, you're never going to be used by God. I'm sad to say that. Um, in the old days, it was soapies or something like that. And they just like to just watch Bold and Beautiful and a goalie. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, who said that. That time will not be interrupted. And you say, but wait, I'm going to, God, I'm going to sacrifice that up. I'm going to give it up to you. Why? The Holy Ghost is, is telling you he's looking for a sacrifice. Nothing valuable. Power does not come unless there's a costly sacrifice that's been done. A transaction that's been made that costs you something. God transacts it and He gives you power. And you say, instead of doing that, I'm going to get into my room and I'm going to pray. Whether it's just a half an hour, but I'm going to seek your face. I give it six days, seven days, if you're just starting off and you'll have an encounter with the Lord. Within six to seven days, you will be so on fire, you'll just feel like I want to read the Bible. Why? Because you're going in the way of the Holy Ghost. You are taking his promptings and his leadings. So stenazo is a groaning. But this is not you groaning, okay? I just used that speaking of hunger. The groaning here is a groaning where the Holy Spirit in you groans. Are you guys with me? Let's go to, to, to explain it a little bit better. Go to Mark 8 to verse 11. Mark 8 verse 11. I think, I, I don't know, this is supposed to be encounters. So I hope I'm not doing too much. I'm going to give too much here tonight. It's too difficult for you to swallow. I don't know. Then the Pharisees came out, and listen to this, and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. So with it, testing him. Next verse. But he sighed. He groaned, the Greek word groaned, stenazo, which means groaned. He groaned deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Assuredly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. We see this, we see how Jesus groaned in him again. It is something that is, uh, that is, uh, 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 that is a groaning. It is, it is a negative groaning, not a positive groaning. Are you guys with me? When he said, Epaphata, heavens opened. It was a negative groaning that provoked him to say a word and command the heavens to be opened. Many times miracles take place. When we pray for miracles, compassion can come immediately upon you. And there can be a groaning coming out of you where you just by authority say something because you are feeling and relating to the pain of the person and by virtue of compassion which is the key to miracles and the connection to God you say one thing and suddenly the person is healed compassion is the key to miracles are you guys with me say with me stenaso so the word stenaso means to sigh it means to groan so the first sensation of the Holy Ghost which is a red light is there's a groaning that comes. But I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more now, but I want us first to look at another word, which is also the red light. So the red light of Stenaso, let me explain it like this. It is an inner witness that is in your spirit. It is like you're driving down the road and something in your spirit tells you, uh, don't go into, don't take that off term. Maybe because it's going to, um, maybe because it's, uh, if you take that off term, there can be an accident. It's not going to kill you, but it's going to cause a lot of heartache. It's tenaso, but it's an inner witness. It's a, sens a sensation. Say with me a sensation. A sensation, you have spiritual senses and you have natural senses. Natural senses, you can smell, taste, see, hear, touch. Spiritual senses is also senses, but it's in the spirit. Unless your spirit is trained, you cannot have these senses that I'm speaking about. If you're going to try to have this, 
you're going to go into witchcraft unless you have the word of God in you. The Bible says that we have, mature, we, have, we have gone into the word of God to mature our spiritual senses, to train our spiritual senses. So what, how do I get these senses that I'm speaking to you now coming upon me? You see, it's not going to happen to everybody here. It's going to happen to those who are in the word. This word is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The moment you spend time in it and you read it, if it's three, ch three chapters a day, three or four chapters a day, that's just, which is a lot. You just read three or four chapters a day. It'll take you 20 minutes. You read that and then you get into prayer. Do it for a few days. You'll begin to have these sensations that I'm speaking to you now. Because reading and studying the words matures and trains our spiritual senses. So that we can know how to be guided by the Holy Ghost. Are you guys with me? The last thing I want to do is to teach you spiritual senses and people might not have the word in them. So let's get to, let's go, with, go with you to Matthew 9 verse 30. And as I said, I want you to stay with me tonight before we pray for you so that you can understand this. Listen to this, Matthew 9 verse 30. And their eyes were opened... And Jesus sternly, say with me sternly, warned them saying, see that no one knows it. See that no one knows it. The Bible says that Jesus sternly warned them. The word sternly warned is another red light. Are you guys with me? It is the Greek word, embry myo myo. It's very difficult to spell it, so just write as you think it is. Don't worry about the spelling. It's not going to get you saved or anywhere. But it's Embry Mayo Mayo, which means a stern warning and a strict red light. This red light, for example, you'll drive down the highway, and it will tell you if you take this often, you are dead. Everything in your spirit will come up like a wall. And you'll feel like you're unable to take that after. That if you do it, you will feel like you are dying. If you've never experienced these things, you've never been led by the Holy Ghost. You've been led by your emotions. Are you guys with me? So I'm speaking about our senses being spiritually trained. So say with me, stenazo. Say, embri mayo mayo. I know it is a difficult word, okay? Embry myo myo. Let me get into another verse where th this is used. The same word is used. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Go with me to John 11 verse. Uh, go with me to John 11 verse 33. Listen to this. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Are you guys with me? The word troubled there, say with it, troubled, is embry myo myo. Jesus was troubled in his spirit. When you were to have this sensation, it would be a sensation of troubling coming upon you. This is what we call another red light. So please, I want you to just stay with me. So don't worry, but the one red light is tenazo. It is a, it is a uh, light red light. How do I say it? A lighter red light. Then you have Embry Mayo Mayo, which is a harsh red light. When this thing flashes, it is a life and death. It is the Holy Spirit warning you to say somebody's coming into your house tonight. And if you are there, if you are not protected, they'll kill you. It is where Jesus is specifically saying, do not, he sternly warns you, do not go there. This is a no-no when it comes to the will of God. Are you guys with me? Uh, 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 uh. It is a complete authoritative sensation that tells you completely no, this is not for you. You want to marry this person, the Holy Ghost is saying no, it is not for you. But we disobey it. And then we wonder, why is everything such a mess? Now you're married. Now you can just come to the Art of Sex conference because there's nothing you can do about it now. 
Okay. But there's no, there's no greater destroyer of destinies than two great people with great callings getting married who were never supposed to be married. I'm going to say it again. There are no greater destroyer of destinies for two great people with great callings to get married that were never supposed to be married. Hmm. Are you guys with me? So, so Stenaso, so let me, let me explain it like this. Um, give me three people. Up here, oh, John. Yeah, 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 the three of you guys, yeah. So just stand for me. Yeah. Like, like all facing that way here. Yeah. Next to one another. I don't know how I'm going to say, how I'm going to do this, but you can step like maybe up to here. Okay, stay there. Um, come a bit forward. A uh, bit forward there, like there. Okay, you can come. You can be there. Uh, face that, that way there. Okay, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but that's fine. And you just stay there. Okay. So let's go through Romans chapter number 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. Um, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, say with me, present your bodies a living sacrifice. He's saying, listen, there is something that is required of you that's going to get you into place. Number one, your body must be a living sacrifice. Number two, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Next verse. Now listen to this. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Say with you the good, the acceptable and perfect will of God. So I want us to change the word acceptable to permissive, okay? That's the actual translation. So here you have the good will, right here. Here you have the, the permissive will. And here you have the perfect will of God. If this is your future... If God is saying, I've called you to be a millionaire, or I've called you to be a preacher, or to be such a strong ministry, or to do this, there's a perfect will of God for you in there. It's the man that you have been created long before you were even formed in your mother's womb. It's a blueprint that has been laid out for your life. That all you need to do is just follow that blueprint. Are you guys with me? But it comes by the leading and the guidance of the Holy Ghost. The problem is when people step into the permissible will for their lives. They miss the perfect will. And they think things are still okay because they're on the way kind of like to there. And then there's the good will. The good will is what happens to everybody, to the believer and the unbeliever. The sun rises and sets. The rain falls on the unjust and the just. That is God's good will. Are you guys with me? It is His sovereign will. It takes place. Blessings comes to everyone. It is His sovereign. This is just... So when he says the good except permissive and perfect will, there are three wills we can get into. When we are unsaved, we are in the good will. When we get saved, we step into the permissive and the perfect will of God. But unless I find out what I'm called to do, I can never go this way. And it can be one wrong leading or one misleading of the Holy Ghost. And I can just make a turn and miss and I can still think everything is right. Let me give you an example. Kenneth Hagen was called a prophet and a teacher by Jesus himself. And because the people never accepted the prophetic in those days, he moved over to teaching. And he had, an, and, and he had a small church, small, maybe smaller than this. And this is a man whose books we read up to this day that have changed the face of Christianity. And he had a visit, and he was had an accident, he went into hospital and he thought, well, why was this happening? An ambulance came to fetch him. And while he was being carried into the ambulance, I believe on his way to the hospital, Jesus said to him, I will tell you later why this happened. And as he got to the hospital, he said, uh, he had a visitation 
And he was a man who had one of the most visitations of the Lord himself visiting him, sometimes up to eight hours at a time, standing in front of him, talking, telling him how to cast out a devil here, how to do this. That's Kenneth Hagin. And the Lord said to him, you have moved out of my perfect will into my permissive will. And he said, Lord, but how? He says, you have become a teacher prophet, but I've called you to be a prophet, a teacher. And because you moved into a teacher prophet, you're not going into the right place. And if you go off like this, it might look small to you, but you'll end up in another direction, completely far away from where you're supposed to be. Are you guys with me? The permissive will of God. Stenasso deals with the permissive will. Stenasso deals with timing and motive. So people miss the perfect will of God here because their timing and motive is wrong. Whether it comes to business or ministry, they get saved, they get into place, they begin to see God's face and they feel, ah, I should go start a ministry. But you haven't even been trained yet. Uh, I want to just go start a ministry. It's something that God has called them to. But because they are not sensitive at that moment, they're denying the sensation that comes in to tell them it's not the time yet. Or they're not even hearing it because they're in the flesh. They haven't been trained in the Word. And they step out and they do another will. It looks similar. Actually, come stand here, like close to him. Let's say there. Okay. It looks similar, but it's not here. It's not whom God has destined them to be. And here is poverty. Here is prosperity and blessings. Because God doesn't fund something He hasn't called. He doesn't pay. I don't pay. I don't hire uh, Chris as a, as a CFO, but He's uh, cleaning the floors the whole time. And He doesn't want to do any financial things. But He just wants to clean the floor. I'm not going to pay Him. Even if he thinks, but he's, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Why am I not paying him? And he gets upset with me. This is how we are in the kingdom. We employ ourselves. Are you guys with me? So how do, it is also through the leading of the Holy Ghost. How did I get where I am today? It is by the witnessing, the inner witness, the leadings of the Holy Ghost. Angels visiting, those things are rare. That's what we call spectacular leadings. Visions, dreams, angels. The problem is people are looking for that and they're disobeying this. They're disobeying Stenasio. They're disobeying Embria Mayo Mayo. Are you guys with me? Thank you. I can have your seats. Thanks. So what is Stenasio? Stenasio is missing the timing of God and the motive being wrong. Hmm. Uh, let's go to... Let's go to... Um, let me, let me see how, so let's go, to, let's go to Mark chapter number 14 verse 4, Mark 14 verse 4, listen to this, but there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, what was this fragrant oil wasted for? For it might have been sold. This was where we see how the ointment was on Jesus' feet broken. And, and, and Judas was there and he said, We could have sold this for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized him sharply. So if they criticized him sharply. They said, But why is this preacher wear this and that? Why does he drive this and that? You know how much poor we could have fed with that? They did it the same to Jesus. Somebody came and poured ointment, a prostitute's whole year of wages. And she was a high-class prostitute. She took a perfume that was worth all of that, broke it at his feet, and Judas stood there and he said, you know what? We could have sold that and given it to the poor. So the attack we get as preachers now, as somebody said to me one day, I just looked at the person, I thought, oh, you are a devil, it's okay. Let the devil torment you said to me, they don't understand how preachers can live in, five, in a five-bedroom house. I said, what if they have five children? <laughs> but the, the problem, the, the deception is you think you are allowed to. But we are not. I'm not speaking of over-splurging. But what is the thing in you that makes you think you can but that we can't? Just because you are a businessman, you say we can't? 
That's what they, that's what, that's called the Judah spirit. It'll betray you like this. Said Jesus, you don't deserve it. In the meantime, he was stealing money out of the, out of the money back, out of the treasury. Are you guys with me? We have people, uh, we have uh, people say, one person saying, you know, that uh, a preacher saying that I'm so into prosperity and how dare I, you know, how dare I, uh, you know, take offerings up that long. I'm not, I've even given up, I'm not taking up offerings anymore. But in their eyes, I'm still taking up offerings. And, uh, and uh, then they would preach and they would say to people, listen, I will never manipulate you for money. And they will stand in front of us and I'll never give you money. I'll never ask you to give me money. But please, can you give us money? <laughs> it's called a false fake humility. Is that okay? What happened there? <laughs> I don't know. I think four people don't have to go, but it is okay. Um... <laughs> so I'm just talking to you relaxing because I want you to rest or relax so that when we pray for you that you can receive what you should are you guys with me it's called false humility and the person goes behind the scenes and asking money from everybody the same preacher you gotta be kidding me rather do an off proper offering and don't go like a snake behind the scenes When you can have money and there's nothing wrong with it, but when money has you, it destroys you. Are you guys with me? So where are we? Mark 14, okay, verse 14, verse 4. Say with me, criticize. It says they criticized him sharply. They, sorry, they criticized her sharply. The word criticize sharply is embra myo myo. It is a, that harshness of a red light that comes into your spirit. It is like a, sudden criticizing that hits you sharply in your spirit to tell you do not do this if you go this way you will be destroyed are you guys with me now it is like a scolding if i can say it like this what it means in the greek it is like the holy ghost scolding your spirit telling you to stop doing what you are doing but it is i'm trying to tell you that once we overstep this realm that is where people get into trouble this is where they begin to backslide. Are you guys with me? So, embromayo mayo, it is a type of conviction. Stenazo is a still small voice. Just tells you, listen, do not be careful. Do not go off this way. If you do, you're going to go into the permissible will of God. It's not saying you're going to go into destruction. God is just saying, this is not for you. Stenazo is, for example, like this. Like, uh, you stand by a car dealership and you want to buy a car. And you see a car that is three million, and then you see a car that is one million, and you can afford the one that is three million, or they'll give it to you. You can't afford it. They'll give it to you. Okay, uh, you can sign it, and a voice comes to you and say, "Don't do that." It doesn't mean that you'll be destroyed if you take that car. It just means unplanned, un uh, distracted, or distractions will come to you. And that can put you into the permissible will of God. So Stenazzo is there to lead us in these type of things. And it is God's warning in a light way. Embra Mayo Mayo is a conviction that can say, listen, if you go down this road, you're finished. It is a wall that will come up. Are you guys with me? There was a... Uh, there was a uh, person that... Uh, claimed to be a prophet many years ago and he and he and he uh tried to get involved with me and chris and it was not listen we can smell a witch very quickly it was not one day it was like we, i was preaching in this conference you know and this is the thing it's a conference and they invite three prophets to speak i was one there was another person then this person and you would think, okay, well, these, these guys inviting, I don't know anything about the person. Anyway, this person, I mean, they can tell you your phone number, all this stuff. 
and I'm preaching there, but something doesn't sit right in me. It just doesn't. I'm looking in the man's eyes and I'm just seeing darkness, but it doesn't sit right, but it's okay. And uh, we're hungry, we're hungry for the prophetic and so on. And the next day or something, or whenever the guy calls us, he wants to meet us. I said, okay, that's fine. And we met. And it was like, I don't know, a few hours. And the Holy Spirit said to me, listen, this is wrong. Like, and I felt this wall coming up in my spirit. This is the protection of the Holy Ghost. And I remember going that night to bed. And in my dream that night, I was in another place. And I saw angels standing and I saw this whole scene playing out. And I was taken through to this man. And they wanted to give me a certain garment in this dream. And the Lord said to me, if you take this thing, meaning if you go into relationship with this person, you're changing a covenant. And you're being initiated. I know I've been, apparently I've been accused for being initiated in some mountain in Africa. It's okay. You know. That just means that power, people are seeing some type of power that m- makes them think they cannot have. That the only way that you have it is by getting it from witchcraft. Stop giving the devil so much glory. So this was a witch, by the way. This person was, uh, 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 did go to a certain mountain in Ghana for power, which they do. And, uh, and in this dream, the Lord said to me, if you do it, you change your garment. You're being initiated. And he said, there's been no way. And I saw in the dream a red line. But he said, there's no way back from this moment. And I remember coming out there. Next morning, I just blocked the number. Never heard again from the person. Then they began to send some, some little uh, minions to us. But what was it? It was the Holy Ghost protecting me from making a wrong move in ministry. We had many times like that. Where I would want to step out something or do something. Even before we had the church, something we wanted to do or some, we wanted to plant the church before it was the right timing. I signed a contract, everything. If we didn't want to call it a church, we just wanted to have weekly meetings because we had a move of God that was going. And I signed the contract, everything, gave it in already. And the one night I sweat so much I couldn't sleep. And I was in my office, it was 1 a.m., Something was just wrong and I got a phone call from somebody it was late at midnight. They said, listen, are you sure you should, we should, you should do this? And I don't know if it is. And I, and I knew that night I went to bed and I said, I said, God, look, I'm sorry. This is not your will. And the next morning I said, look, if I'm sorry, you have to get us out of this. I signed the contract. Everything is done. And the next morning they phoned us to cancel it. They said we had too many people. The parkings was too much and there was security risk and etc. And they had to cancel the contract. Um, but we had, what, we had a lot of people. Timing was wrong. But what happened? It was not a stenazzo that came on me. It was an ember mile mile where the Lord said, if I miss this, this is the harsh red, my life will be destroyed. I will miss the call of God for my life completely. Stenazzo is a red light, but it's more lighter. It's just light warnings here and there. But it ends up by removing the will. Are you guys with me? Getting you out of the will of God. It is where Jesus put on John 12 verse 27. John 12, verse 27. La sedano. I see us late. I want to go on. I need to just, let me just quickly get to the other two, the orange and the green. Now my soul is troubled. Say with me, my soul is troubled. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say then? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came into this hour. Say with me, troubled. Now I said to you earlier, the word troubled means groaning. But here it is a different translation. It means tarasso. Say with me, tarasso. It is a different troubling. It is what we call an orange light. It is a light just to warn you of danger that is coming, but you have to carry on. Are you guys with me? Jesus said, my soul is troubled. It is when he was knew that he was going to go to the cross. He was speaking of his cross, of the crucifixion. He says, my soul is tarasso. It is troubled. What shall I say? Get me out of this moment, God. He says, no, no, no. It is for this purpose that I came into this hour. So there is an orange light that will come to you in the form of tarasso. Once it comes to you in the form of tarasso, it is just a troubling, it is a warning, but to say you need to carry on. I don't know if you guys are with me. Uh, let, me, let, me let me try to, let me try to, uh, 
Let me try to explain it a little bit better. Terrasso is, let's go back to Stenasso, where I said a light warning. A stenaso can just be a nudging to tell you that something is wrong. Remember, embry myo myo is the severe one. Stenaso is the lighter one. Stenaso doesn't mean you shouldn't go a certain way. It just means there's something that's wrong. You need to, for example, you're a business person, you're signing a contract. You're sitting in front of the contra contract, but you just, you don't have peace. Now you must discern, is it stenaso, is it embry myo myo, is it taraso, is it, what is it? And maybe you've, you've, but you know but God has spoken to you about this business contract. But why are you feeling this trouble here? It just means you need to peruse it a bit better. So now you say, listen, I have stenaso. With the moment you get stenaso, you must stop what you're doing and retreat and go and pray. Or wait and pray. And you go through the contract, all of a sudden you see a clause that would have gotten into trouble. You remove that, you go back to the person, all of a sudden you have peace. So Stenazo was just warning you of making a mistake that would have gotten you into a situation. Are you guys with me? It just warns you. Then you get to Tarasso. Tarasso is saying, listen here, there is dangers going forward, but I've called you to go forward. Tarasso is God saying to me, now, you can plant encounter, but you'll be rejected and you'll go through troubles, but you have to do it. So he prepares you to go through it. Tarasso warns you of danger, but prepares you to be prepared for it. Tarasso is like an early warning system. So when Russia is about to shoot a nuclear weapon, which they're about to try and do anyway, because of Biden, but let's leave that. Uh, if the moment they launch a, an ICBM, America has an early warning system that warns them, and then missiles is released to intercept that. Terrasso is an early warning system that just tells you this danger is coming your way. This is what you must do to avoid it and to avoid it, but you must carry on in the same direction. Are you guys with me? Let's get so with the orange light. So let me say it like this. Stenasso is something deep inside our spirit. It is a light red light in relation of timing to be wrong or motive to be wrong. Or we're just missing it a little bit, but it can take us off the road. Embry Mayo Mayo is a strict no-no. It is a stern warning. Terrasso is just a danger signal, an early warning system to tell you, you're going to go through this, be prepared. So that when you get to that moment, you can be prepared. It's Jesus seeing, he's saying his soul is troubled because he's looking at the crucifixion. But he has to go through it. Because it is the will of God for his life. Are you guys with me? When I was called, the Lord said, I've called you as a prophet to these nations. But you'll be rejected by many. Do not be dismayed by their faces. For I will, you will see even your brothers and preachers trying to kill you and stop you. Oh my goodness, did we actually literally see that? And I'm even thinking of a situation. And, and the Lord said to me, the closest to you will try to destroy you and destroy your ministry and put an end to your ministry but you'll demonstrate my power so what do i know i know the dangers that is coming so i can just prepare myself for what is coming are you guys with me it is called terrasso i'm speaking about us have living a life that is led by the spirit of god let's get to the green lights let's get to the first green light say with me it's another difficult word uh, paraxumai, say with you paraxumai. Uh, paraxumai, say with you paraxumai. How do you spell it? Uh, P A R P A R O X I M O N A I, something like that. Paraxumai, it means. Uh, it is a green light in you, but it is, say with me, a lighter green light. So you have a lighter green light and a strong green light. A lighter green light is something just in your spirit giving you guidance. Go to Acts 17 verse 16. We're almost finished. Acts 17 verse 16. Hmm. 
You have a lighter green light and you have a stronger green light. So Barak Sumanai is now while Paul waited for them at Athens, listen to this, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. The word provoked, listen to this, the word provoked is that Barak Sumanai, meaning that Paul's spirit was vexed and was provoked, but it was a green light by virtue of a negative situation that happens. Let's carry on reading, verse 17. Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentiles, worshippers, in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. And I believe this happened for almost more than a year, almost two years, that Paul was in this place and he started a huge ministry, teaching daily in this ministry where many came and listened to him. Simply because in his spirit, he was provoked. God never told him to do it. He just had a feeling it's a green light to go. I want you guys to understand this. Remember, there were two red lights. The one red light was the lighter one. The other one was the stronger one. The one is the one that you have to focus sense inward. And the other one is something that will stop you physically, almost, if your senses are trained. In the green light, there's one that is a light green light in you. It is this one where Paul was just provoked. He might not have heard that uh, God, God didn't tell him, I want you to stay here and plant a ministry. He just saw what was happening. He saw the occultics works. He saw what was happening around him. And his spirit was provoked in him. And said, I'm going to start a ministry here. And God allowed it because it was a gentle green light. So we have these green lights in us that allows us to minister. Meaning, you will not hear thus say of the Lord that reach out to that person. It is our job to reach out to that person. Are you guys with me? This is Parakshamana. It's something that God will not speak to you on about, really. It is just, it is just a leading. It is there for direction. It is, for example, if I, uh, how can I say, it is a feeling that comes over you. And Kenneth Hagen explained it this way. And this is the only way. Well, he explained it about a velvet type feeling. I explain it different. I always say to people, even in the church, I have a warmth in my spirit here. The moment I have a warmth, it's to say that I'm in the right direction. I'm in the way of a light green light. Are you guys with me? It is, um, it is to say that I'm in, the, I'm in the place where God wants me to be. You'll just go to bed and your spirit will be fulfilled. Or you will go to bed and you will feel empty. And when you feel empty, it means something is wrong. It doesn't mean you're saved, you're born again, spirit fault. But you just feel uncomfortable in here. To the fact where there's a feeling of shame coming on you. It means something is out of place. And you need to do an introspection. To say, but wait, what is going on? I need to see. Uh, some, it, it is God giving you a signal something is wrong in your life. But it's like Joshua, he doesn't tell you this and that. He wants you to go search and seek it out. He's just giving you a signal. Are you guys with me? Now let's get to the last green light. Uh, no, no. So remember, paroxonomai is just a gentle feeling. It is, for some, it can be a feeling of warmth coming on them. Is it just me or these lights going on and off and on and off? Is it? Okay. Is it a power problem or do they even know about it? Okay. So it is, a, it is like a warm feeling coming on to them. It is, a, uh, it is like you're sitting in front of a fireplace. Some can feel goosebumps. But it's just a, the way I can explain it is a place of fulfillment that comes on you. Let's get into the last one. Say it is soon echo. Say it again. Say soon echo. So the difference between paranoxomai is that it is inside. Suneko is the power of God coming upon you to force you to do something. Let me give you an example. Let's go to the last scripture. Let's go to Acts 18 verse 5. Then I want to pray for you. Acts 18 verse 5. Lasko ebrede Listen to this. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled, so if he compelled by the Spirit, he was 
enforced by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Soon echo, the, 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 the last green light is the harsh green light that comes upon a person. It is the most powerful place you can be in ministry. It is when you are so filled with the Spirit of God that at any moment in time, the Spirit of the Lord can come upon you, can compel you and force you to minister to somebody immediately. It can force you to go and do something. It can force you to get into your car, drive to somebody's house, you have no idea why. And you stand in front of them, you begin to prophesy over them. I do not prophesy over people unless I have suneko coming upon me. A compelling to come upon. Meaning I don't just choose somebody out by the guessing because I feel this person. No, no, no. Many times I'll ignore it. And when I ignore it, suneko will pull you back and begin to trouble you in your spirit. Because you're ignoring somewhere where God wants you to take you. So paranoxomai is the inside of a green light. In, say with me, inside. Sun echo is the power upon you. But the Holy Ghost can only come upon you when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. That rests upon you. Are you guys with me? He comes suddenly, He moves on you. Suddenly you just, whether you're on an airplane or in a bus or out on a mall, suddenly the Spirit of God rushes upon you. And you just feel like you need to preach the gospel. It can, it's soon echo. The word soon is partnership. It is congregational. It's where we get the word synagogue from. Are you guys with me? Which means that it is the Holy Ghost comes soon, echoes the Holy Ghost coming upon you. And causing you to be in such a... Uh, partnership with Him. Boldness coming upon you. What gives you the ability even in the prophetic just to say is there somebody by this name? Or say, do you have this in your life? Or, the, or even if you're walking on the streets and you're saying to somebody, I sense that this and this and this is happening. It is soon echo that comes on you. It is a green light that compels and forces you forward. Are you guys with me? So say Say, say these words with me. Or let me say it like this. Say paranoxomai is gentle. Sun echo is violent. So what do we have here when we start right from the beginning? We have stenazo. Then we have embrimayomayo. Then we have taraso. So stenazo and embrimayomayo is two red lights. Taraso is an orange light. Are you guys with me? Parumaxumai is a green light, a lighter green light. And then the harsh green light, say with me, soon echo. It is just the Holy Ghost coming upon you, but you have to be in a place where your senses is matured, where you're saturated in the presence of God. You have spent time in prayer. You're somebody that is hot and on fire for God. Go through to John 17, verse 3. John 17, verse 3. Listen to this. Say this with me. And this is eternal life. That they may know you. The only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Say it again. Say, this is eternal life. That they may know you. The word know there does not just mean know. It means to have a personal, intimate, actually to a degree of a sexual relationship. It's gnosko. Are you guys with me? Which means that he says, Jesus is saying, this is eternal life. That you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You have a personal relationship with God. There is a conviction of the Holy Ghost inside of you. There is a witness that the Holy Spirit bears in you. That you are children of God. It is a relationship with God. Africa and South Africa has a certain witchcraft and a sickness and a disease. They battle to go to God for themselves. And even in the prophetic, because we kind of like bring an image that it's like you go to the prophet for solutions. Do you know sometimes it is every minute 
I mean, I just counted just from driving from home to here, because I had my phone by my leg. It probably had about 30 vibrations, just from home to here, of messages. Please, I need to see the man of God. Please, I need a prophecy. Please, that the whole time, every time, every, every few minutes of every day. I promise you. Yet they fail to see God inside of themselves. Yes, there are times when we go to a man of God. There are times for that. But when you see what we see, do you know how many messages we get? Oh, it's impossible for me to even answer. I don't even look at it. I don't even read it. So please don't send me a Facebook inbox. I, don't, I really don't look at it. We got auto responders and then our team tries to respond. But it is too much. And you can see the dependency of people upon a man and not upon the Holy Ghost. What is the reason for the month of the Holy Ghost? It is to know you to know, but wait, the same Holy Spirit that is upon Leon is upon my life. The same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead is living and breathing inside of me. The same Spirit that was upon Paul's life is upon my life. The same spirit that was upon David's life is upon my life. The same spirit of the Lord that came upon Samson's life. When he tore the chains and was filled with fire is upon my life. The same spirit that came upon David when he tore the lion uh, uh, a jaw apart has come upon my life. Are you guys with me? The same spirit that was on David's life when he took out the bear, took out the lion and took out the giant is upon my life. The same spirit that was upon Daniel's life in the lion's den is upon my life. In fact, the Bible says that if the glory was great in the old covenant, in the old testament, how much more greater is the glory in the new covenant but yet we are unable to do anything what does it take it takes somebody to press in say with me to press in to press in and say god i want to seek your face i want to seek your face until i find you i want to plow the fellow ground open i want to fast and pray until i can find you it is being sensitive to the sensations of the holy ghost to the breath of God upon your life. The Holy Ghost is a real person. Just keep standing. The Holy Ghost is a real person. He's the most sensitive person that there is. Are you guys with me? He's the most sensitive person. He is so affected by your feelings that when he gets grieved, he works on the inner sensations and attitudes and behaviors of your heart. We think it is about speech. The moment it is a thought, he grieves his grief already. If I'm on the road and I have road rage, what is happening? The Holy Ghost is pulling away. Or I'm rude to this one and I'm irritated with that one. What happens? The Holy Ghost pulls away. Or I'm short of with this one and I just don't want to speak to that one. Or, I, or I, I am just in my spirit. I'm just upset. And upset an atmosphere. The Holy Ghost is grieved. And then you still act like you are a Christian and everything. What is happening? Soul power. It's not spiritual power anymore. Spiritual power is not conjured. Do you know how many preachers I've seen that conjures the power up? Let me not get into that. They literally conjure power up. I've been around. I mean, they will like. In America, you get it a lot. You know, they like clap until the power gets there. It's conjuring up the power. Spiritual power is there. You don't have to stir it up. Soulish power needs to be worked and stirred. Spiritual power has a channel. It is right there. Are you guys with me? Raise your hands to the Lord wherever you are. Let us 
Zebroska aro kana moske eteke na maroske de na maske. Zeka asko teke na mayo. I want you wherever you are right now. I want you just to ask him. Wherever you are standing. Be focused upon the Holy Ghost. Let him just come. Let him fill you. La dono. Lebros cabre de lesket etena marodushke daya. Zedano. Lasko ebre kenoska ede lebre de namaske daya. Holy Ghost. That you will come and move and breathe. For the Lord said to me, Brandon, that this year is going to be a phenomenal year for you. For even as you have sacrificed and you have laid certain things down, I saw the Lord saying to me that a clock is ticking and the fullness of a season is coming. For the Lord is saying something you have dreamed and something you have desired. For I'm shifting and I'm bringing a shift. For where the enemy has desired to put you into permissible will, you'll be shifted into the perfect will. For the Lord is saying, see how I will not open your eyes. See how I will not put you into a place which you have desired. But do not give up on that which I've called you. For the Lord is saying, I am opening and bringing a revealing. And son, you will feel the anointing come upon you, says the Lord. You'll see me clothe you in power. Paroska ekenevoska erede lebroska adenoska enemaya. Ledos ekenamaroska de lebresko taya. Ledoska andre kenamoska enamoska te kevraska de leboya. Lebroska de lebronoska e de lebredanoska de damaska taya. Ledoska andro doska te kaya. I pray for the fire of the Holy Ghost to go home with you tonight. That even as I'm standing in front of you and prophesying to you, that this fire will be in your belly, will be in your spirit. For I, the Lord, is saying, Behold, that the heavens I will open. If I am God, see that the shift that I will do in the next 24 months. For I looked and I saw how a miracle is going to take place when it comes to family, says the Lord. For where the enemy has tried to separate and hurt and grieve, and I'm looking at a property, says the Lord. For even as I'm standing, I'm looking at this property where I'm standing in front. For I see a blessing of the Lord that is coming to you. And I see an opening of the door that is coming. But the Lord is saying, I will raise you up. We don't even put your eyes upon those things. But turn your eyes upon me. And you'll see the call. That you have thought maybe is dead. You'll see how it will come alive. For the Lord is saying, I will put a mantle upon you. That has been there, but you have been in the place and the mantle of serving. That will take you into a place of leadership. For the Lord is saying, my mighty right hand is upon you. But the spirit that has come from a generation before. To try to stifle you and to limit you. Will be removed and will be delivered from you this night. In Jesus mighty name. <laughs> Right now. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Let the weight of the glory of the Lord come upon him. Let the weight of the glory come on his life. Healing to your spirit. I'm right now, just stay in this uh, song, we don't change it now, stay in this if you are here and uh, you're saying you need a fresh baptism, fresh infilling a fresh hunger, I want you to come with an expectation to say I want importation of a holy hunger, 
I'm hungry for the Holy Ghost. I want you to come to the front. Let us pray for you. Hungry upon me. I want us to just renew that commitment. Sweet Spirit of the Lord, as I live my hands in surrender to them right and now afresh let the power of the Holy Ghost fill them afresh let a fresh hunger come upon them a fresh touch a fresh presence I pray for importation of holy hunger in Jesus' mighty name. Say with me, say, Holy Spirit, I receive you tonight. Spiritual power, a fresh baptism. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to come and pray for you. Let's worship. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome.
Great. 